Welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael, and this is a show about all things dog. Hey, everybody. Today, we talk about the Boston Terrier. What a fun little dog. I mean, just, I, I mean, you just see them with like a bowler hat on. <laughs> yes, they are known as friendly, bright, and amusing, and nicknamed the American Gentleman for their good manners. So, let's jump into it and we'll meet Bryn, Bean, and Yoda. Let's get started. So, we are here with Bryn from... Hello, hello. You got to share your blog with us because we, we met... <laughs> Back in Atlanta several years ago because we were at Bark World Expo. Right. My blog is a dog walks into a bar, which combos my two favorite things, which would be dogs and drinking, <laughs> not necessarily in any particular order. So um, before the pandemic, I talked a lot about dog friendly locations. So breweries and wineries that you could bring your pup. Uh, I haven't really done a lot of writings. It just kind of feels flippant of that content when we're all dealing with the pandemic. So I haven't really done much for the blog in a little while, but hopefully we'll have a time when we can all go out in public again and put on real pants and <laughs> drink a beer with our dogs at some point, hopefully soon. And where are you guys located? We are in Massachusetts. That's um, right. So Massachusetts is a big place. A lot of people think we're in the Boston area, uh, which would be cool since we had Boston Terriers, but we're <laughs> in the Western part of the state. So if people are looking for a landmark to be familiar with, uh, UMass Amherst, the University of Massachusetts mm -hmm. flagship campus, is about 10 minutes from our house. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So how did you come to get Boston Terriers? So, good question. We, I personally was kind of obsessed with the concept of smushy and dog-faced dogs and had started to really gravitate towards Frenchies. Frenchie, Frenchie, Frenchie. They're cute, they're small, they look like potatoes, they have legs. <laughs> and then I researched breeders. And at one point I had gotten a quote from a breeder that was more than a mortgage payment. And it was wow. just, it was not something that we could do at that point. But we were definitely looking at dogs that were a little bit smaller. We were currently in an apartment. So that was a part of our decision making was size of the dog. But we were also looking at activity level. I work from home. I, I don't work from home at the, or didn't at the time. So there would be a window of time when the dog would be alone. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure that we weren't bringing, for example, like a German Shepherd dog into our home that really would have been better suited to have regular walks and regular training sessions. So not to say that we weren't going to be active with them, but you know, knowing that that yeah. activity level. Um, so we, we researched Boston Terriers as a breed. Um, and I also noticed I was very conscientious of some potential genetic traits that might be issues. So um, luxating patellas and cancer. And um, so my husband, for example, is in love with boxers, but they almost always wind up getting cancer and I, mm. I can't handle, I mean, that would they, they leave us too soon anyway, Yeah. Right. but the idea of getting a dog that would likely pass away in that way just was too hard for me yeah. personally. Yeah. Um, so the smaller version of a boxer is a Boston Terrier. And when I was preliminarily researching there, yes, there are some genetic traits to be mindful of, and there are certainly some health issues to be at least asking about. It wasn't as prominent as other kinds of breeds. So that tended to, that was the primary reason why we gravitated towards, for, towards the Boston Terrier breed. Um, when I was starting to do research for how to find a breeder, I went to the AKC website um, because I, 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 I was a little bit worried about well, what does it mean if I go on to just a cold call, like Google search? What, what does that yeah. actually, because things look really good online. <laughs> yeah. Right. And there's certain websites where you can kind of tell that it almost looks too good and, you, and yeah. you don't actually know what's happening behind the scenes. Um, so I went to the AKC. I know that it, it, the breeders are, are paying to be there, but they're paying to be there, which means they, they care enough to have that conversation and to have that sort of vesting. 
Um, and then the other thing that I was really aware of was making sure that we actually went and were allowed to visit the breeder um, to see the home, see the dogs, speak with each other, have the breeder actually care and ask questions about what's your home like, what are your home lives like, what, what are your commitments, and also be um, very forthcoming in saying if you're not able to undertake the responsibility of the dog for whatever reason, we will take the dog back. Um, Absolutely. To, to really have that, she was very vocal um, in what her expectations were of the family members that she was adopting to. Mm -hmm. And her, her location was about three and a half hours away. So she was pretty far, mm -hmm. um, but she was also, she's like, I'm, I will never adopt or, you know, have a dog join a home if I don't speak with you in person and allow for you to see my space first. And that, that's um, key. We talk about that a lot because like, you're right. I mean, in this day and age, people can make a website look fantastic and you think, oh, this must be reputable. But until you have those conversations and you go in person, that's, you know, that's a clue that you're finding someone who really does care about the puppies. Correct. Yeah, and, and the other thing that points. I think was really helpful for me was because I've also heard a lot of like that bait and switch concept, which is really concerning where someone will say, please send a deposit or in order to work with me, please send X amount of money. And then poof, they just disappear. Mm. And that yeah. is so concerning. And a lot of people don't realize that that's a potential issue. And this person said, I will not accept money from you until I meet you. So she was sort of the opposite of that, where she wouldn't yeah. allow a deposit until both parties really knew what they were getting themselves into and whether or not it was the right fit for, for the families too. That's a great point too. Yeah. Very good. So, point. so had you met Boston Terriers before you embarked on I think, this? Or? I mean, let's be honest, every single dog I've ever seen in passing, <laughs> you've met. I will try to go visit, even though honestly, it's the, like the dog's don't have to speak with me and, and neither, neither do their humans, but I will push women and children out of the way <laughs> and see the dog in the distance. Um, and if I were to give myself a superpower, one of them would probably be finding the dogs like far away and be like, yep, got to go see that bad boy. <laughs> um, so I'm sure that I've accosted strangers and asked to speak with their Boston, but I never really spent time with the breed as like, there wasn't like a family member that had one that yeah. I had to snuggle with beforehand. So it was just those incidental um, conversations that I had with complete strangers out in public when I'm supposed to be getting groceries. <laughs> <laughs> and stupid question, but being that you are from Massachusetts, are they very common up there? Because, you Maybe know. in the Boston area, uh, I, I'm sure that there are just being a city probably more than where we are. Um, our, one of our dot Bostons, her name is Quincy after Quincy Market and her middle name is Bean as in Boston baked bean. <laughs> I usually just call her bean unless she needs a full middle, first, middle, and last name where there's a, a significant concern. <laughs> um, but so we, we sort of honored the location, but I don't really know if geographically there's a larger population. Sort of population. When I'm, I'm on some Boston Terrier Facebook groups and um, I mean, it's really just another excuse to talk to strangers about dogs, but <laughs> most, uh, many of them are, are not in the New England area. I mean, there, there are, um, a, Bean has come for a visit. Hold on one sec. Awesome. So she knew we were talking about her. She's like, yeah. did you say my name? Because I'm, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Aww, she is so brown. beautiful. Um, How old is she? She's 11. You can tell by the judgy eyebrows. Hey, Bean. Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey. Hi. Uh, she also, this is a Boston trait, I believe. Uh, she goes right to second ba base when she's kissing you. So um, she is very affectionate and very licky. She's like always, she has to like be touching you. And if she's touching you, she's probably licking you. Uh -huh. um, so just as and a, uh, is that a trait of them? They, they, they are, are, they are very and... snuggly, if, okay. um, but both Bean and Yoda are, are pretty licky dogs um, as far as the way they show their love, which is sometimes adorable and a lot of times absolutely disgusting. Yoda <laughs> will look at my face like he's going to kiss me and then just burp directly in my mouth. Oh. So, you know, that's, that's cool. cool. <laughs> but that's okay. 
That's awesome. <laughs> so um, between Bean and what was the other? Yoda. 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 Which one is more affectionate? Are they both equal Bean. or? Bean. Um, Bean is definitely more affectionate and I don't know if it's because she joined us as a puppy whereas Yoda was an adult when he joined us. So when he actually came to us he didn't really know how to dog. You know what I mean? Like he, he was in a person's home but he wasn't necessarily a pet in the way that people sort of uh, refer to pets. Right. So it took him a while to even figure out how to snuggle. Um, he didn't really know. So he was almost like a grandpa. He would just putz around the house because he didn't know how to settle. Yeah. Um, so it took him a little while to just feel comfortable in being calm. Uh, so I don't know if, if that's the reason why he's not quite as affectionate or if it just happened to be, you know, every personality. Now, every now was Bean around when Yoda came or was? Yes. Bean was uh, Bean, okay. uh, is, she was an only dog for many years. And, and that was a concern about bringing right a second hot dog into a home, especially an adult dog. Um, but we, we tried it and, and it, the one thing that I will say about bringing a second dog into a home is it takes a lot of time and right. it's not as pretty as what Facebook or Instagram will tell you. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of language, understand, understanding each other's language piece. So when they were playing, for example, both my husband and I would look at each other and, and say, you know, is that play sound or right. is that I'm fighting sound? Yeah. Right. You can't necessarily tell. And, and sometimes when they're excited, it looks like they're agitated and you can't necessarily decipher if this is, I'm happy, I want to still do this or please leave me alone. Mm -hmm. um, so it took a long time for us to decipher that language. Yeah. Um, and it also took a while for us to just help them to understand how to sort of de-escalate. Mm -hmm. um, and that was something that we, we wound up, Bean had gone with us to training for, for years just to keep her entertained, really. <laughs> um, and when we brought Yoda home, we wound up bringing both of them to training and then having separate training. So they had their one-on-one -on -one time and they also had time as a cohort so that way we as a family were making sure that the way we were training was consistent. The words we were using mm -hmm. were the same. Um, and that each dog had individualized attention. Um, so the trainer did a really good job of helping us to, to sort of decipher that, that language to make sure that if some either one of them was getting overwhelmed, they knew a space to go and they mm -hmm. didn't feel badly about going there. So. Um, we get, we also, and still, we will give them one-on-one -on -one time to play. We'll give them one-on-one -on -one time to go for a walk, um, use a toy. So that way it's great for them to be, get, be together. But I think that everyone needs the opportunity to just have their own space. Yeah. Right. Um, so to give them that opportunity, but on it, like they're not best friends that yeah. they tolerate each other, each other. And for the most part, they're kind to each other. Mm -hmm. But there are still instances where, for example, five minutes ago, Yoda, who he really is a big potato with legs. He's just this <laughs> round creature with legs. He's solid. He's a solid, massive animal. And it was time for them to go get dinner. And he just, he doesn't, I don't think he, he's intentionally, I mean, he, we're not humanizing dogs, right? So he's not intentionally doing stuff, but he just, jumped right on her head as he was getting off the couch for dinner. <laughs> and she's much tinier. Yeah. I'm sure that it didn't feel awesome. Yeah, so it right. wasn't intentional, but it was still something where like, oh, that probably, that probably yeah. was an awesome feeling. Um, so they're not best friends. And that's one thing that I think people who are considering bringing a second dog into a home should really be conscientious of is it's probably not going to be instant. And if it is instant, congratulations. <laughs> but in many cases, it's going to take a decent amount of time and a decent amount of work to just be okay with being with each other. And even then, they may not be the besties that you hoped that they would be based yeah. on the things that you see on the internet. Well, uh, and we, you know, we have, so we have, Riley and Finley are three years apart and they, they like each other. 
but they don't snuggle, they don't play a lot, you know, it's just kind of like, so they okay. like when they're, when they're both here, they're happy when one, like when one of them leaves, the other one's like, hey, wait a minute, but. Well, <laughs> not. Well, dot, but, dot, dot. But, yeah, so when Finley, who's the oldest, leaves, she's, I don't know if she's concerned Riley, that, Riley, 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 I don't know if Riley's concerned, like, where did he go? Or if she's like, why, didn't you take why am I not with them? Mm -hmm. Okay. When Riley leaves, Finley's like, thank God. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. curls up and just goes to sleep. He could care less. Riley does when her family is Separated. like, yeah. So if I go on a business trip or something for at least an hour or so, Megan's told me she'll just stare at the, if not longer, just stare at the door. like. Okay, where did he go? Okay, mm -hmm. so Riley's a bit more of that codependent, I guess is the <laughs> worst word to use, but he's kind of, code, where Finley's like, eh, she left. Yeah, yeah. I need some rest now. Then, yeah. yeah. So with um, with Boston Terriers, um, personality-wise, is, is, is there, are there any, like, traits that kind of carry across, or are they all just individual and... I think they're, the, in general, they're very affectionate dogs, mm -hmm. um, at least towards their humans. Um, how they are around other dogs, I think, is a, is a really big, there's a lot of variables that could affect how that behavior is coming across. Being up until, I mean, maybe three years old, would just like me as a human, expect for every other dog to want to be her best friend. <laughs> right. And then she got she got attacked. She got a, a larger dog. It was, I, I don't remember, it doesn't matter the breed, honestly, but basically yeah. I was speaking with the human connected to the dog. I looked away for a second. And by the time I looked back, Bean's head was in the other dog's mouth. Oh my God. And yeah. The other dog was like, I'm about to have a nice, like, <laughs> um, so where the separation. And since then she's, she's not, <laughs> amazing around other dogs in that she's reactive she she doesn't she doesn't know how how that interaction is going to go mm -hmm. but she'd rather let that other dog know hey i'm not okay with you so she's she's pretty vocal yeah if we go for walks when she sees another dog and letting that other dog know i don't want to be your best friend yeah um so that's something to consider, but I think that that's more a, a, an event related yeah. behavior than it is a breed specific behavior. We have um, the same problem. We, we, we have the exact same problem. Yeah, so, right, right down to being attacked. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah, except and, and with the, the it's lovely. Hard to, to get out of that, too. It's, it's yeah. hard to, to, I mean, we've done training so much after that, and she's 11, and it's still something. I mean, she's better. Um, you make right. you make us feel better. You make us feel better about that because we we didn't do as much training as we should have afterwards. And we're and I've always been like, gosh, you know, we should have just gotten right back on the horse and you know gotten out of, around dogs. But you know, I, I get you know they're it, it's it's kind of like the the rescue dog that doesn't like men wearing baseball caps, right? It's yeah. like look that has hurt me one time. I'm not going to trust it ever again. And you know that that may never change. And it's their it's their um, safety mechanism, right? It's mm -hmm. the way that they, they remain safe. And so I, I get that. And it's a shame when it happens because, you know, you can't, you yeah. know, you can't explain to them why and that right. every dog isn't that way, but it makes it tough. Um, yeah. I know because they are the short nosed breed that you have to be very careful in the humidity and the heat. So mm -hmm. um, do, do you have any tips for people on that? Like, you know, we have, we have a couple of, I think we have a pug and a Frenchie that get walked by the house regularly. And um, sometimes I, I get nervous because it's maybe middle of summer, middle of the day. And I'm like, oh gosh, this little dog is going to have trouble. Do you yeah. have any, you know, advice on that? Yeah. So brachycephalic dogs, definitely it's a concern from an overheating standpoint, um, which means a few different things. They, they do get hotter, faster. It's harder for them to sort of release that, that heat. Um, and so if you're noticing your dog, if you have a brachycephalic dog and you're noticing that they're panting a lot, their eyes are getting glossy. If you lift their lips and that they're not really a bright pink, those are all indicators that your dog is, is overheating. So if at all possible, bring them indoors, 
um, put cool, damp towels on them, um, have them provide access to water, any of those immediate. And if, if you if you're noticing that that temperature is not going down after those activities or even preliminarily, call the vet. So that way the vet knows and if there is an issue, you can bring them. They, they know that that could be a, 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 an activity that happens shortly afterwards. Okay. So for us and what that means from a preventative standpoint, if we are going for walks, we do. Um, so we do have a lot of mountainy areas where we could potentially go for hikes. So what we typically will do is we have dog backpacks where we will bring, they will walk with us up to a certain point. We will give them water. We have those collapsible water bowls. Um, we'll give ourselves water. It's usually a good reminder. If you're giving it to your dog, you should probably drink too. <laughs> and then we might bring, hoist them and bring them up to the summit. Um, so it's, it's always a safety net for us. We, we have the backpack just in case. That's smart. Especially if we're farther away from a home or a car where we know that it's not like you can just immediately bring them to a certain location. Um, if we're bringing them around just the neighborhood for a walk, what we typically will do is just be really mindful of temperature and try to go there early in the morning or towards dusk. Um, and if it really just doesn't seem like it's a safe idea, um, we might take them, we obviously will take them out to go to do their business, but we'll do some indoor activities instead. Yeah. Um, so we do a lot of scent training with them where uh, if people have leftover uh, paper towel rolls, putting them, you know, treats inside, rolling the edges, hiding them around the house. It really, it's free when you think, I mean, you, you need right. the toilet paper or the paper towels anyway. Yeah. Um, and you just having them search for something and have that, that reward of finding an uh, of something with a treat inside is is definitely a way to keep them entertained. So we try to do things that will keep them mentally stimulated if there are times when it's just too warm for them to yeah. be outside. But definitely regular access to water um, is something that is really important. And if you're starting to see that panting, give them the opportunity to just chill out. Even if it's yeah. for a couple minutes, it might not need to be like, and we're done, but yeah. enough for them to at least get themselves back and, and feeling a little bit more calm. Um, she, she's back, she's looking like <laughs> She can um, join us. Are they pretty high, um, high energy when they're younger? Uh, Bean's 11 and she still has a lot of energy, but so she's, it's weird that like when, if you're, ready to go do something. So go on a trip, go for a walk, go to Home Depot. She will be like, okay, let's go. But as soon as you're in the home chilling out, whether that's during the work day or um, you're watching a movie, she's like, great, let's snuggle. Um, so it's not, it's, she's active, but not active where it's like needy. I don't yeah. know if that's the right word. Um, Yoda, being the big potato that he is, um, I think he would be totally fine with never actually leaving the house and <laughs> doing anything. Um, so when I, and he's not obese, he's, he's not a fat dog, but he is round. So yeah. We measured him. I had to, I mean, let's be honest, I, I put them in a costume. So I <laughs> measured them at one point to see what I could what size I needed to get from Amazon. And when I measured from the back of his neck to the tip of his tail, and then the circumference of his neck, it was different by one inch. Oh, wow. wow. So he is, in all concepts, either a circle or a square. <laughs> uh, but, so, I mean, he, he'll indulge us by going on walks, but he, I think he would be fine with never actually doing that. <laughs> He's like, okay, fine, we'll go. Yeah. He's so, like, fine, I know that there's a treat at the end of the deal. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so, um, do they shed much? Yes. Not as much as, well, let me, it, I've been around dogs like labs where if you don't sweep every day, there's like a tumbleweed of fur yes, that just that would be our household. <laughs> yeah. So that we do, we wash the linens on the couch pretty frequently. And, and we do have one of those robot vacuums that we, we call uh, Boba Fett and we put um, googly eyes on it. <laughs> so we clean that out every day and there's, there's definitely stuff that it's picked up. Um, so they do shed, but it's not the same as like a, like a, um, a dog that like 
during like husky fall or... and yeah fall yeah. and spring where they're like <laughs> all day like lose another dog. <laughs> right. um, you don't really have to worry about that um and we don't we don't brush them there's not really anything to brush mm -hmm. um right. and i will only wash them if yoda especially will just roll in something dead yeah. <laughs> um, then I'll have to bathe them. But other than that, I, I really don't give them regular baths. Okay. Um, so they're pretty low maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the only thing that I think is a struggle for Yoda is cutting his nails. He just mm -hmm. doesn't, he just doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. right. um, so what we've done is, is I will, I'll just put um, peanut butter on the inside of a tub. Mm hmm and I'll, so he'll lick the inside of the tub and I'll do his nails and I'll usually just do one paw at a time and give him treats oh, in cool. between. Um, so he's gotten better, but that, I think that's just, I don't think he was touched that way when he was young. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. To it. And that's an important point to really make sure that if you do get a puppy to touch those paws and start all of that so early, cause it really does make a difference. And when the dog is, eight, nine, 10, and you're wrestling them, you know, it's even small dogs like we have, you know, you're still wrestling them to, to trim those nails up. So it's, it's an important point. Um, do they have any issues with, you know, needing cleaning around their, their faces? Do they have anything I like that? I think some Bostons do have some wrinkle cleaning needs. Ours don't, uh, but you will see sometimes if they, depending on the coloration of their face, those white tear stains, mm -hmm. and they're, they're re really not tear stains so much as they are other stuff. So it's not a bad plan if you have, so some people will use um, the, the, the cloths that are intentionally used for grooming so they're safe around a face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have them just in case, but we don't really use them all that often. The other consideration for, for families is because their eyes are sticking out, mm -hmm. that is if they are playing with each other or they're playing with other dogs, or even if they're walking by anything on the ground that could snag them, yeah, there's a bigger chance of um, any sort of corneal ulcers or corneal scratches. And, and so my recommendation and it sounds so silly but if a person's bringing a, a, a puppy in general into the home is crawl on the floor so that, like you're getting on their level to mm -hmm. see what could potentially be a thing that they could either get their teeth on when they're you know teething or potentially any obstacles that could be in their line of vision because corneal ulcers they're they're incredibly painful so if nothing else it hurts and we don't want yeah. our dogs to be in pain but they can also be kind of a, a struggle to heal depending on how right. deep it is and how you know what their activity level is um so bean got a corneal ulcer last summer and no. it took about a month and, and it was because she had gone to a doggy daycare and they weren't properly super, supervising. Oh, um, no. So that was, that was on us to not, we didn't properly choose the daycare. Um, so either way she got hurt and it took about a month and a half for her to fully heal. Wow. And that <clears throat> cone of shame for a month and a half oh. and three different eye drops that had different so one was four times a day, one was three times a day, one was two times a day. It was wow. like a clear logic problem that I was not qualified <laughs> to, to do. Um, so like a pain thing and a lubricant and one was like weird colored and it was just, I felt bad for her because she, every time she was like, seriously, she would like give me the middle finger because it's not fun. You're coming so, at me um, again, woman. <laughs> um, so being aware of their eye locations and, and yeah. treatment. And if they are, if at any point they are squinting, do not mess with eye injuries, immediately take them to a vet. Um, That's a really good point. Thinking, hey, it might be better tomorrow. It will not be better tomorrow. It will likely be worse. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I had a um, coworker who had a Chihuahua mix and, you know, it had little sticky outy eyes, the technical term. And uh, we were on a Zoom call, you know, this was during quarantine and and he was like, Megan, hey, you know, the dog nerd, he's like, Megan, um, Sally's eye is having trouble. She's blinking a lot, you know, what do you think? And so he held Sally up and I'm not a vet, you know, but I could tell Sally was like, yeah, that I would call the vet. And 
and something had gotten in her eye and scratched her. And so he was, you know, going through the process of the drops and the cone and everything like that. Um, and, you know, in fact, I noticed since Finley is losing his vision as he's aging, he's got uh, cataracts. Yeah. Um, so I was noticing, you know, there was something in, I, I'm now working for myself from home and there was something low, you know, and, and he doesn't, his eyes don't stick out, but it was low and it was right in his line of sight. And I was like, I need to move that because he can't see it, you know, right. and he's, yeah. he's, he, he's liable to, you know, knock it with his eye. So that's a really great point to get on your hands and get knees on their and, level. Yep. Get on their level. Cause, cause we may not see what the projectile is and they get to, especially like you said, as puppies, they get to running really, really fast, <laughs> go around that corner. We have hardwood floors and slide and slide right into it. So people baby proof their homes. I guess you need to puppy proof and doggy proof your homes which too. We, which we all do, but something like that, you know, you don't think about. I mean, you think about, you know, putting things up and thank God we all have small dogs that can't counter surf, you know. <laughs> but I think right. about that when people have bigger dogs like can't leave anything out. But yeah, um, yeah that's a fantastic <sighs> idea. Um, anything else? We we know that the Boston Terrier is a mascot for BC. Wofford. Wofford. The Wofford, Wofford Terriers. Oh, okay. So yeah. we, I, I don't know how we looked that up at some point. Well, years ago. my high school. One of my high school football coaches played football there. That's how I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wofford Terrier, and it's a Boston Terrier. <sighs> yeah, check it out and tell <laughs> us if we're right. <laughs> um, but is there anything else that, you know, health-wise, you said they're they're pretty healthy, We're obviously watching out for the eyes, and then, of course, the overheating. Anything else that people should know? I think, and I don't know if this is because I'm on the Facebook groups, and so everyone's talking about it, and I don't, I don't know if this is a microcosm representative of the entire population, or if it just is a, a regular conversation, but I will say that a lot of conversation and bean is especially a dog that is this is true allergies is is licking paws scratching during certain times of the year is it food is it environmental blah 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 what do we do so she's been on anti-allergy medication for much of her life mm. um, for a while it was atopica then it was apoquil or maybe the other way around um, and then now she's using the Cytopoint injections, which mm -hmm. I m much prefer. Um, and so it works really well um, for, for her for about two months. Um, and then she needs to go back. So I don't, I really don't know if that's representative of the breed so much as it is representative of the people who are talking about it in the Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. um, there has been some ancillary research that's been quoted indicating that the dogs that are not the common color so the breed standard is black and white possibly brindle um, but i've seen boston terriers being obviously as brown and i've seen brown i've seen red i've seen blue bostons lilac bostons and it's there was some research quoted and i, I don't it's not i don't know if it's peer-reviewed so it could be just again just random facts mm -hmm. that may or may not actually be facts but it looked like a lot of the dogs that were those other like the the recessive genes mm -hmm. were more likely to be um suffering from allergies which i thought was kind of interesting because yoda aside from the fact that his legs don't move in that way so he can't really scratch he's, right. he's a big potato <laughs> um, but he he's never indicated hey i'm itchy Whereas being, during certain seasons, especially, she she is a pretty itchy dog. Um, and for a while, her she had licked her paws so much that they almost looked brown instead of white. Oh, it was, it was irritated. Um, and the Cytopoint injections helped that. Connected to that, um, and I don't know if it's a chicken and the egg conversation. I personally think that one of the reasons why Bean got a mast cell tumor was because of some of the allergy medication she was on. Mm -hmm. um, but if a dog has a mast cell tumor, they're more likely to get them again. Um, so we're constantly checking and, and we have a caliper. 
I think it's a caliper. Mm -hmm. So I have a caliper and a drawing of bean and I, I will keep notes usually like once every two weeks uh, of the size of the bumps. Right. Um, so that way if something has grown or, or looks different, she'll go into the bed again. So I don't know if breeds, if um, mast cell tumors are more common in Boston's, but it seems like they are. Okay. Boston's boxers, um, other breeds, it, it does happen to, to happen more often. So if a person has a Boston and they're noticing a bump, you might as well just bring them in for at least for, um, what did the, the needles, the uh, fine needle. Yeah. Usually doesn't cost a super amount and mm -hmm. it's at least help you, help you. Cause you really can't eyeball a bump and know right. it, it, it's no. one thing or another. You might think, you know, but not, you really don't until you yeah. see that stuff behind the, underneath the, the magnifying glass. Um, so we, she has a pretty gnarly looking scar on her right hand side. So it makes her have some more street cred. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're pretty conscientious of the bumps because of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anything that I have not asked you about the breed or anything you'd like to just add? It sounds like they're super snuggly, cuddly. They're, they're um, like comedians. They, they really are really goofy. They're also very empathic. Um, they can absolutely tell when something's going on um, in, in a positive way or in a negative way. And yeah. they, do, they do match the, that energy. Um, so if, if I'm stressed out, Bean will, act, I mean, she's next to me normally anyway, but she will be checking in on me. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. When I had a kidney stone, she was literally rolled up against my kidney, like a little heating pad. Oh. So they, they can, I mean, dogs in general can tell, yeah. um, but I feel like they are particularly empathic little creatures, which I appreciate too. That's awesome. Oh, that's fantastic. We have one of those. Riley is that way. She, like, I could be crying at a commercial that's like sweet, like, you know, uh, the holidays and she's like, are you okay? Are you okay? You know, mm -hmm. it's amazing. But, fin you know, Finley, he's just, he's just always by my side, but she's, she definitely picks up on it. So it's. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting quality and it's it's super cool that 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 might be a Boston quality. And you know, being that they are more um companion dogs versus, you know, our dogs, which were bred to be, you know, working dogs in the field. Um, you know, it probably has a lot to do with the personality differences. Um, but I, I've always thought, you know, what do they they call them like the the gentleman dog? They're they're yeah, the American gentleman. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um yeah, they're 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 pretty awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking your time to talk to us about Boston Terriers. They are special little dogs and super cute. Um, I know our listeners learned a ton. You have just great pet parent information that I think really is super helpful to, for anyone. So thank you so much for your time and, and thank you for letting us meet little Bean and let Yoda know, even though he doesn't like to move. I've, I've got a shirt on for him today. <laughs> Uh, I'll let him know that that uh, you asked for him and he yes. slightly declined. <laughs> Tell him I understand his calendar is full. <laughs> no, he he really wants the the what is it when people when rock stars want um like certain food. Oh gosh. Oh yeah. Oh uh, no no brown M and M's that yeah, sort of thing. The, the writer fit his contract so. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, sorry, ma'am, Tuesdays aren't good for me. <laughs> well, have an awesome day. Thank you for you too. me. And hey, let everyone know where we can find you online. So the blog that that's exists but hasn't really gotten new content is adogwalksintoabar.com. Um, you can find us on Instagram under, if you just type into Instagram, a dog walks into a bar. There's someone else who has the one that has no dots or, or underlines. Um, but then there's us, which we actually post stuff. Yes. Um, and then we're on Facebook, a dog walks into a bar, you know, the, the common thread. Um, I did create a, a, a separate account called dog colleague, um, that I need to do a little bit more work with too, where I've just been taking photos of the dogs and acting as if they're my annoying colleagues that <laughs> 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 where you all had those coworkers, you're like, oh my God, like the one who will call and hang up and call and hang up and call and hang up and not send <laughs> a message. 
or IT who will say, you know, did you shut it off? And turn <laughs> it so I've been doing dog colleague um, hashtag as well. That's and awesome. I, I bought the domain, but I haven't actually made a website. I, I bought the, the domain uh, cat colleague too, but um, I have to actually, you know, <laughs> make the website. <laughs> well, we can't wait for that because that is going to be some fun stuff between um, office space and the office. I mean, my God. So, so much material. It, and it's just all true too. So it's like, yeah. those are all based in reality. So, well, thank you so much. We will look forward to that. And sure. um, we hope people who have Boston Terriers will comment on uh, what they want us to know about. The Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you. Have an awesome Thank you. Time. You too. All right. Ah, I know we didn't get to see Yoda, but we got to see Bean and talk to Bryn all about this awesome little breed. They just seem like a fun little dog. Oh, yeah. They're they're a dog that that you see and you just smile when yeah. you see that dog. Yeah. You're like, ah, I like that guy. You know? <laughs> yes. So they are um, a lively little companion with a tuxedo jacket, and <laughs> you know they're typically black and white. Um, you know, Bean had that sort of reddish color. Um, but you, you know, just a, yeah, I see that tuxedo. Yeah. I, like I, I see, I want to see a little bow tie. Little, yeah. A little bow tie. And <laughs> you know, kind of like our dog nerd. <laughs> little, little hat and going down the street with it. Yeah. So these dogs, believe it or not, are a mascot to Boston University. Yeah. And they're the official dog of Massachusetts. Yeah, which, of the whole state of Massachusetts. The whole state. <laughs> which makes sense because yeah. it's the Boston Terrier. Yeah. And it is a, a dog that is native to America. Um, mm. It actually was bred here. So the original, I think, father, what do they call that? Sire, I believe, came from England. Mm -hmm. But then uh, the dog was developed here in the Boston area. So that's where it gets the name. And they are a sturdy, portable, people-oriented breed with a natural gift for comedy. So it makes sense that Bryn mm -hmm. named her blog, A Dog Walks Into a Bar. <laughs> what a, That might be one of the best names for, for a blog. Yeah. Right there. And I mean, she's got two Boston Terriers. It fits perfectly. Um, so make sure you go to adogwalksintoabar.com to follow Bryn and what her pups are up to. <laughs> um, also, you can find them at Instagram at a dog walks into a bar, but you've got to put a period in between each word. Oh, right? uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. A few things about the Boston Terrier. They are a great companion dog for those in the city or country. So you can have them in an apartment in the city. They love to go to the sidewalk cafe with you. Um, they like to be a part of your life. So they're, they're pretty adaptable. Wow. That's uh, that's great because usually it's one one or the other, and it's kind of nice. Yeah, I, I I know that they're very affectionate, especially toward their humans. Yep. So they you know they would be a great first time dog. Yeah. Uh, for for somebody that's never had a dog before. Yeah, you know they're part of the non sporting group, so that you know they're that's kind of a, a random grouping that the AKC has. I say random. I don't mean that in any offensive way toward mm -hmm. anybody, but, um, you know, they're just a, a good little companion. So yeah, they would, they would, would be a good first time dog. Um, they can be sensitive. So use gentle training, which we always say to yep. use gentle training, positive training. Yeah. Um, and, and use a lot of warmth and praise. You can use, uh, treats as well for them. You just have to be careful that they don't put on extra weight. <laughs> yeah, that, would, <laughs> that, that would be cute for a few minutes but it's probably not good yeah so yeah so their coat in our research we found is they don't sh they sh they shed but not it's not like uh like a golden or or you know another type of dog has a double coat it's very minimal and uh, they do need weekly brushing and that will probably help with the shedding but they're, it's just good for their their skin, the oils yeah. and their coat and everything. Yeah. Um, and then activity level. They need a moderate amount of exercise, but it varies from dog to dog. So they do need regular exercise or play. So, you know, just letting them roam around the backyard. If it's fence is not going to be enough, um, you know, give them some playtime, take them for a nice little stroll. 
But um, again, that can vary from dog to dog. So you may have a dog that's a complete couch potato <laughs> that doesn't want to do anything. Um, so that that they're not a high active uh, breed, highly active breed. So um, a few things to watch out for, as I mentioned, weight gain, so that they can they can put on weight. So be careful with that. Um, and then of course, as Bryn mentioned, check their eyes regularly. They if if they are acting squinty and and you know irritated, then that's definitely you need to probably take them to the vet because their their eyes do protrude, and that means they can get more foreign objects in them. I even read that some owners carry around a little saline bottle mm. to rinse their eyes out. And, you know, that makes sense because if you are like a city dog and there's a lot more dirt and grime in the air, right. well, I shouldn't say that because even in the country, there's, yeah, <laughs> there's dirt there's in the dirt air. dirt and grime, maybe more so. And it's also that the other thing she talked about was the um, kind of doggy proofing or baby proofing because of their eyes in their house. You want to make sure that you don't have Sharp plants corners. or something that's at a, at his level. So when she said, yo, get, you got to get down on his level and kind of walk around <laughs> and see what he <laughs> sees. And that's a, I think that's smart, especially with uh, how their dogs, uh, how their eyes are. Yes. And um, they can also have luxating patellas, which is pretty common amongst the smaller breeds. So, you know, watch out for that. And then of course, Bryn talked about taking care in the heat and humidity. Mm hmm they are a smushed mouth or smushed nose breed because I can never say the word that she said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, any any of the breeds that do have a kind of smushed in snout, they can have real trouble cooling themselves in hot, humid weather. So you really have to be careful of that. But that's, yeah, that, that's really it. I mean, what a what a great dog for first time or or any time. You know, if you like if you like the breed or if, if you're older, mm -hmm. even, you know, it, what a great companion, Yes, you know? Yeah. And you know, these guys can be rescued as well. So mm -hmm. make sure to check out if, you know, if a puppy is too much for you because you just can't deal with all of yep. that training, I am sure there is a Boston Terrier that is just waiting for a home. And, um, so I have to say, I forgot got that I had this shirt when I was when we did our interview I, I thought I had a Boston Terrier shirt this is my for those on the podcast you can't see it but it's a constellation of the yeah of the Boston of Terrier the Boston Terrier um and I do make these I need to make them for more breeds but um so I wore my Star Wars, Wars shirt in the interview for for Yoda, for Yoda I was like, yeah. well, you know, and then of course we didn't see Yoda, but that's okay um he'll, <laughs> he'll watch it back and he'll appreciate it um but they, you know, what a great little breed. Uh, if you have a Boston Terrier, we want to know all about it. So please comment below. If you are um, a rescue group that uh, rescues Bostons, please let us know who you are in the comments and we'll make sure to give you some publicity there. Absolutely. And um, you can find us everywhere online at Dog Nerd Show. If you would like to be interviewed, Email us at dognerdshow at gmail.com so we can set up for a chat and anything else, Mike? Yeah, so if you haven't subscribed already, please do that and hit that notification bell down there. It'll let you know when we have a new video up. Uh, if you're listening to us on a podcast, we we uh, we get these out every two weeks and we're available on all the podcast services. So, uh, yeah, we love we love hearing back from you too. So if you've got any, uh, any comments or any dogs you'd like to see us uh, uh, cover, We'd be more than happy to do that. So. Yes, we do take requests. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of like Friday Night Love. We take requests. <laughs> so we, we look forward to uh, hearing from you. And, uh, yeah, subscribe. Just a little button right down here. Yeah. Just hit that. Just click that. That's all you got to do. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thanks, guys. Until next time. See ya. Bye.